uh, different types of surgical procedures we can do to make your breast more beautiful or youthful looking. And we're going to sort of do a very general uh, run of the mill, everything from breast augmentation, breast lifting, breast uh, reductions, uh, to breast reconstruction. And I'd like to start out with by telling you these are the topics we're going to kind of cover uh, today. So I'll start out with breast augmentation. As you go through an aging process and the youth of a young lady when she's starting to develop breast, the breast will develop and become firm, uh, very uh, dense usually, more of the uh, breast tissue itself. And that's one reason in very young women, teenagers and early 20s, we don't necessarily get mammograms on them unless there's a le legitimate reason to because their breasts are so dense that a lot of times the radiologists have a tendency to a little overread them and so forth. So it's clinical evaluations at that stage. And it's the recommendation by the American College of Surgeons and the American College of Radiologists uh, that women consider having a baseline mammogram between the ages of 35 and 40. Um, some of the literature points to the fact that 40 is the starting stage when you should have it. But a baseline, um, just a simple diagnostic evaluation uh, screening mammogram is what's usually done at that stage. And you can see as the breast age, these grades, one, two, three, and so forth, pseudotosis. This is what we call tosis or drooping of the breast. And when we have a grade one tosis, um, what we're really looking at is when the nipple is at the inframammary fold or the fold line that is underneath your breast. Um, when it starts to drop a little lower and the nipple drops below that line, it's a grade two. When it gets to the point that your nipple looks like it's pointing down at the uh, earth, then that's more of a stage three. A pseudotosis is when the breast does something called bottoming out and the bottom of the breast looks like it's below that line but the nipple is still above the uh, above or at the level of the inframammary fold. When people uh, come to us and they want to make their breasts more youthful, they've completed their family, they've had their children, or even when they're younger and they haven't had children, um, breast augmentation can certainly give them what we refer to as upper pole fullness. And the upper pole fullness, uh, when we're talking about that, is this area here of the breast and here. And a lot of women will come to us and they've maybe completed their family and they'll say, you know, I kind of liked it when my breasts were engorged with milk and I was nursing and I was pregnant because they were nice and full. And then over time, as I finished nursing, I started going south. And so when you have somebody that presents with a breast that's sort of like this, or a breast that's like this, a pseudotosis, a simple implant will simply lift their breast and give them this upper pole fullness. When the nipple starts pointing below the inframammary fold, at that point, breast augmentation alone is not going to lift the breast. You're going to need to have something done in order to lift it. This young lady came to see me. She completed her family and she said, I don't really want any scars on my breast. She said, because I, I don't really want them lifted, but can you fill my breast so that they will be more youthful looking? And so she had a breast augmentation. Um, Pre-op mammogram was negative. And this is what we were able to achieve with this. Natural looking, mature breast had the fullness here. One thing that we always tell patients is we have patients come, I want cleavage, I want cleavage. Breast augmentation doesn't create cleavage. Breast augmentation, if it's done right, correctly, fills out the breast that you've got within the skin envelope that you've got. Cleavage is actually created by wearing a bra that's properly fitted. Um, or a bathing suit top. If they happen to have breasts that naturally are wide enough that they're close enough together, then people say, yeah, well, this gave me cleavage, but her breasts were like that before we did anything. This happens to be breast implants that were placed under the muscle, because I personally believe that you get better mammograms and there's lots of reasons for doing that, but I'm not gonna go into all the detail. I just wanna show you this. The next patient is an augmentation patient that I did. She came to see me. She was a young lady that worked in the OR with me. She did a lot of exercise, a lot of upper body exercise. She really didn't want implants underneath her muscles. Um, and we talked about it and I said, okay, I'm willing to do this. And we put them under, uh, on top of the muscle. 
And what happens if you put fairly full implants in, one of the advantages of putting on the muscle, it kind of camouflages the top part of the implant. You can still have fullness, but it gives you a little bit more of that natural slope. I think you can compare this young lady, who was very slender, to the previous lady, who certainly wasn't overweight, but was a little more mature. And the other lady's breast implants look more mature and more mature breasts, where this one, it's, uh, she looks great in a bathing suit. She's very, very happy. She actually went on to win um, at Myrtle Beach the Miss Hawaiian Tropic Contest uh, the three months after we did this. So she was pretty happy with this results. Um, the next thing I want to show you is this is something that we see frequently. Women come to see us, they've completed their family or they've lost a lot of weight. They have very heavy, droopy breasts. You know, and they say, you know, I feel like I've got fruit roll-ups or I feel like that my, I've got zucchinis instead of breast here. They've just sagged and dragged and I'm, I really, I'm uncomfortable. I've got pulling on my shoulders and I'd like to have this done. This particular lady lost about 150 pounds before we did any surgery on her. And she had lost a lot of weight. We did several things to her. One was a tummy tuck type of procedure on her, but we're focusing on breasts today. And she said, you know, I, I've always been heavy, but now that I have a small waist, because we did her breast after we did her tummy, she said, I'd like to have my breasts lifted. And in this patient with this much volume, you could lift them alone. But she actually wanted them lifted and also wanted implants under there. And she said, I want to have larger breasts so that it proportionate to my body, it really makes me look thin in the waist. And so she had this done. That's what her breasts look like from the side. You can see everything, she's, all of her breast tissue is kind of down here. She's lost a lot of it. A lot of this is skin sagging and drooping because she's lost elasticity in her tissues. And it's a little difficult to see, I think, on your slide, but she also had some shoulder grooving from the weight of her breast pulling down, most likely from an improperly fitted bra. And here she is after she has a properly fitted brassiere in, but she has implants here. And this is what she wanted. That's what she's looking after. And so um, this also is when she had, had had her tummy tuck. So that's a combination of doing a breast lift as well as an um, implants on a patient and gives them the more fuller look. Now, I'm going to talk to you about women who are candidates for breast reduction. Not everybody that has large breasts wants a breast reduction. Not everybody has symptoms. And I think, as Hope has pointed out, if somebody has really good support bras and they weren't fitted properly, they don't always have this. But some women, no matter what size bra that you give them, they're going to have some difficulty with this. Typical scenario to a plastic surgeon is someone that's going to have shoulder grooving from their bra straps. They're going to have very large pendulous breasts. I could recite this to you over and over, but they almost come in and said, I've got back pain, I've got neck pain, I've got shoulder pain, I've got inner trigo or rashes under the folds of my breast, especially in the spring of the year and the summer when it's really, really hot, and I have headaches. And the key clincher on this is when they come to you and they say, you know what, I'm now getting numbness and tingling in my hand from the weight of this bra pulling all of this weight down on my shoulders and on my clavicle because anatomically the nerves that go out to the hand come out of the vertebra in the neck and they go directly under your clavicle or your collarbone and when you have a lot of pressure there it can actually cause some impingement. So frequently we'll have this as an issue and this is an, the properly selected patient. Um, we can make huge differences. I will tell you that across this country breast reduction surgery is one of the larger procedures that we do volume-wise from a reconstructive standpoint, and they're probably some of the happiest patients that we ever see. Um, though it's amazing how they will tell you after they've gotten through the first week of sort of general post-op pain, that I can't believe how much better I feel. I feel more proportionate. And gosh, now I can go out and buy clothes and everything that I buy doesn't have to be a two-piece outfit, or I don't have to pay a lot of money to have everything altered below my chest in order to get things to fit. Because when women like this, they do have, it's not just their bras that they're having issues with, they're having problems with finding clothing. Now there are a lot of different techniques that we use to perform on breast reduction patients for this procedure. But on patients who are extremely pendulous, one of the techniques that's been used for years is called an inferior pedicle technique. 
Um, there are other techniques. I don't want you to think this is the only thing, but the techniques that we use that are, have fewer scars are also in women that are full but don't necessarily have extremely large breasts. But generally, we, this is a you know, diagram here, but we don't cut the nipple out generally. That, there are rare cases that we do that anymore. Sometimes you do have to put the nipple back on like a skin graft. But what we do is we mark the patients on the morning of surgery, and we basically will remove the tissue laterally, remove the tissue medially. We'll actually remove some tissue here and the tissue that's attached to the nipplarillo complex, we remove the outer skin layer and we reduce the size of the areolar complex around the nipple uh, to something that's more aesthetically appropriate for that person and the size of the breast that you're ultimately going to make. And then we simply take this tissue, we fold it up so that the nipplarillo complex ends up in a circular area more appropriate where the nipple should be. This edge here and this edge here are folded over the inferior pedicle that is pushed upward. And this tissue and this tissue, these two points here come together, this line, this line comes together, and they come underneath the breast. So that ultimately when this is finished, you have a nipple areolar scar, a scar that's vertically placed, and a scar that's horizontally placed. And again, this is not the only technique for breast reduction, but it is a fairly common procedure that's done. This is a young lady who is not, not overweight at all. She was a full-time social worker and she came to see me and she said, you know, I, I'm just tired of walking around with these large breasts. They're very bothersome to me. And she said, I can't wait to get home in the end of the day and get my bra off. And she said, I'm just miserable. And so we wrote the insurance company, took measurements, did all the things, wrote the letter, got approval, and we performed a breast reduction procedure on her. Now this is very early on. She's white with really pale skin, got a lot of red tones in her. And this is after she, when she came to see me, she took her bra off and we met, we did photographs. But this is just a few months after her surgery and her scars are very red. The vertical scar is less noticeable and there's a scar under here. And then when she came back to see me at a one year follow up, her scars are pretty well faded out. I mean, you see them, um, she's very, very happy. And so this is a population of patients that are extremely happy with the results that they have, and it makes a big impact on their um, life. It also makes a big impact on making them feel like they can buy clothing off the shelf and don't have to go to specialty shops to get clothing made or don't have to. Not every place has a place like Hope's Chest where women can be properly fitted. And there's a lot of places that they have young gals that have, you know, graduated from high school or they're working part time and that's nothing critical of them, but they don't really know how to evaluate patients. And a lot of women get bras that have been supposedly measured for them, but they're not properly fitted. Um, this is just one of the many examples of what we do in reconstructive surgery. This is a young lady that came to see me. She was a 21-year-old college student. She had never really developed a full breast here, and she had like a tubular breast in this area with a lot of extra tissue here. Um, and she was dating someone that she's pretty serious over, and she was really concerned about intimacy issues and so forth and so on. So what we did was we talked to her about reconstructing this. She wanted implant-based reconstruction, put a tissue expander in here and expanded it, and then put an implant in after the tissue expander in two stages and did a reduction on this side. And she is a little on the large side. And granted, we don't have things that are absolutely totally matched. Probably I would go back on her if I had the ability to do it, and I would have liposuction in here and gotten some of this tissue out. But you can see the side that never developed a breast with an implant reconstruction base actually turned out quite nice. This is a young lady who came to see me who was actually 36 years old. And I saw her before she had her mastectomies. And she said, her husband walked out on her when she found the diagnosis of breast cancer and she said, I, I, I'm, I'm really upset about everything. I've got cancer and you know what? I know I'm not gonna die from this. I've been convinced that I have an early cancer, but I'm gonna have to just take them both off. And I don't want any kind of reconstruction at all. And I said, well, let me just talk to your general surgeon about this, but if we can do what we call a skin sparing mastectomy and just leave the envelope of skin in and at least give you a chance to think about it, if you want to be reconstructed, I'll reconstruct you at a later date. 
If you don't want to be reconstructed, I'm willing to take you back and just trim the extra skin off and do this, but I think you really ought to seriously think about this. And she agreed with me, and so the general surgeon did a skin sparing mastectomy, and she doesn't look great here because she's got all this loose skin, but she came back to see me after she'd been about a year after everything was completed, and she said, you know, I really didn't think this was going to bother me. But she said, I've realized that it bothers me for me, not because of a significant other person, but she says, I'm actually realizing that my husband was a jerk and they're not, not all men out there like this and I'd like to get back on the dating scene, but I don't think I could ever be intimate with someone if I don't do something about this. So she didn't want a flap. She didn't want to have anything done. She had tissue here that would have made a nice breast, but she wasn't interested in that. She said, I just want to do whatever you can do with implants. So we put tissue expanders in her and implants, made man-made nipples and tattooed her. And this is what she came out with. Now, you know, this may not look like the best of a breast that you could see, but you know, that's a lot better than what she had. And that's, this patient was extremely happy and sent me lots and lots and lots of patients. So it was an opportunity for her to be able to have something. We could save the skin envelope. It helped, she still had that inframammary fold and it gave more of a natural appearance of a breast, which she was happy with. This is a young lady that was an office manager for the general surgeon that operated on her. And he did a biopsy on her. I would have never put the scar here. I would have made a curvilinear scar around the nipple complex, but she came to me with this scar from a biopsy and they needed to go in and thought they could do a partial mastectomy on her. So they did the partial mastectomy. We put an implant in this side and a matching implant on this side and she came back and found out that when the specimen went to pathology, they still had cancer on this side. And it was decided that she needed to have the entire breast removed. She went to Duke for a second opinion. After she talked to the folks at Duke and they pretty much agreed that what we had told her was the proper thing to do, she decided to come back and have the general surgeon that she worked for to do her mastectomy and asked me to reconstruct her. We reconstructed her with the tram flap or the tummy tuck breast reconstruction and matched her up to the side that we had already done. And she ended up with this. The, he went ahead and entered her this way because that's where he had originally put her scar, completed that. This is a man-made nipple to try to match her native nipple with tattooing. And I think we achieved a fairly good goal with this to be able to give her something that looks pretty natural. And nowadays, the things that we do, we not only do this type of surgery, but we also do surgery where we can do this as a free tissue transfer or, or like a transplant of tissue. We can take tissue from the tummy without having to take the muscles. And we can take, that's called a DIEP flap. You may have read about that. And that's a DIEP or the initials it stands for, where you just take a blood vessel that's down in the groin area, trace it up through the muscle and the fat and the skin, and you transplant just the skin and the fat with that blood vessel. It's like doing a transplant, but you do it on your own tissue, so you don't generally have tissue, you don't have tissue rejection. You might, in the first two or three days, have potential vascular problems that you might have to go back to the OR to change, but we can achieve this type of thing without having to take any muscle at this stage. You can also utilize tissue from the back and rotate it around to the front of the chest to reconstruct the breast with or without an implant, usually with an implant, or you can take tissue from the buttocks. Um, and that's sort of a general quick summary of what we do. Now my summary on breast surgery in general, I know it was very brief and kind of a overview, but I'm more than willing to entertain any questions that you have, either for me or for Hope. And I wanna thank her for allowing me to have share the podium with her today. So, and thank you all for coming. So, are there any questions? Yes. So just the lip without an implant. Mm -hmm. As far as the how invasive or. Well, it really depends. Every patient has to be examined separately. You know, there's some women that have plenty of breast volume, just over time their breasts have become tautic and droopy. And depending on how much they've dropped. You know, sometimes you can do, I will, I, let me back this up on that. You will read in the literature that you can do just to lift 
just around the nipple or a lift that goes under the nipple and under the nipple and around the nipple, or one that's just like the breast reduction where there's a scar around the nipple, a vertical scar and a horizontal scar. I will say without any exception, it's really almost impossible to get much of a lift by just doing something around the nipple. I mean, those are just sort of tweaking it a little bit. But if you, if you need a lift, there's some women that all they need is the scar around the nipple and a vertical scar, or they might need what we refer to as a J, where they need a little bit of an extension out laterally. Um, and those are women that don't need a lot of lift, but they need something to get their breast perky. And then those that have a tremendous amount of excess skin are gonna end up having the full, what we call a wise pattern, which is the scar around the nipple, really complex, a vertical scar, and a scar under here. The difference between a breast reduction and a breast lift is in general on a breast lift, it's more of a skin type of operation. We may open the breast up and we may anchor parts of the breast up to the chest wall to try to help give them support, but we're not generally removing tissue other than the skin. I mean, there may be a little bit, but not much. And so sometimes it can look like if you see someone who's had a lift, um, they may look like oh, have you had a breast reduction, when in fact it was just a lift. It really depends on, and, and then if you've got somebody that's sort of borderline, um, insurance companies have gotten stricter and stricter on what they will cover for breast reductions, um, but as a general rule, they have a certain number of grams that you want to be able to take off the breast in order for it to qualify for it to be a covered procedure. So um, that's one of the fine dividing lines. Any other questions? All right, then. Any questions for Hope? Well, if not, thank you all very much. Mm -hmm.